Hi, welcome to our Daily Encounter. As we begin the devotion today, I want you to take a moment and think about a prayer that you've been praying that you have not received an answer for. It's inevitable as time goes on that eventually we will have some type of prayer that we've prayed that we wait a very long time to receive the answer. And as time goes on, and as we pray, maybe for a few days, maybe for a few weeks, maybe for a few months, or maybe even over years, we begin to perhaps get disheartened. And we begin to feel like perhaps God isn't listening to us. Like, Maybe he's hiding his face from us. And we might get discouraged. Well, we have a psalm today in our reading that really brings out this feeling. It's in Psalms 13, where the psalmist says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel to my soul? having sorrow in my heart all the day. How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my adversaries will rejoice when I am shaken. The psalmist here is wondering, Lord, how long? How long must I bear this burden? How long must my enemies triumph over me? And he's wondering, Lord, when are you going to answer my prayer? Apparently, he's been under this suffering for quite some time. And he's, he's asking the Lord, how long, how much longer, Lord, until you come to my rescue? And again, we have to think in our lives, are, have, they been, have there been times in our lives where we felt the same way? Lord, how long? How long? And... And we have to be honest, a lot of the things that we pray for that maybe you know, we don't get an answer to, at least right right away, are not really life-threatening things. There are things, yes, that are pressing maybe sometimes. There are things that uh, we really think that, that we need. Uh, maybe there are things that are pretty high on our, on our list of important things. But they're not necessarily life-threatening. In some cases, they might be. But I'd say in most cases they're not. And here the psalmist is in a life-threatening situation. This guy has people who want to kill him. And that's a desperate thing. Just put yourself in his situation. Imagine if you knew that not just one person wanted you killed, but a whole army was looking for you and wanted to destroy you. Think of the fear that would be in your heart. Think about the anxiety, the worry that would cause. And imagine not just having that for one day or two days, but for that to go on for months after months. Yes, the psalmist desperately needed an answer from the prayer, uh, an answer to his prayer, and he felt like the Lord wasn't coming through. So what was he to do? Well, he had options. He could um, choose to walk away from the Lord, take things into his own hands, say, well, the Lord's not helping me, so I'll just take care of this myself. Uh, he could become angry at the Lord, curse God, and walk away. Or there's another response that he can make, and that's what we find him actually doing. He makes the proper response to unanswered prayer. And the type of response that we should make when we find ourselves in the midst of unanswered prayer. The first thing he does is remind himself of God's loving kindness. In verse 5 he says, But I have trusted in your loving kindness. Even though God had not answered his prayer yet, he could still trust in God's love. There is plenty of evidence that God loves us and that God loves us dearly. And it's in those moments where perhaps you feel like God has forsaken you or turned away from you, that you really need to focus on and think about 
how loving God truly is and to look at all the evidences of His love. Uh, we as Christians, we can look back on the cross and recognize that God gave the ultimate price, the greatest price that could ever be paid, and that was his, the life of His very own Son. And that is the highest demonstration of God's love for us. And so, just because He's not answering our prayer doesn't mean that He doesn't love us. And we need to remind ourselves of that uh, when we find ourselves in the midst of unanswered prayer. The next thing He does is He says, My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Now, there's two things that He could mean by this. Um, putting ourselves in His situation, maybe He's talking about the salvation that's going to come from his enemies. That he's saying, you know what, one day I'm going to rejoice in the salvation that you're going to bring me from my enemies. He could also be talking about the salvation of his soul. But we as Christians, we can definitely think about a salvation. And the highest salvation man has ever received. And that is the salvation from our sins. The salvation that has come through Jesus Christ. And so no matter what happens in our lives, whether God... Uh, exalts us, or God humbles us, or we in the good times or the bad times, our salvation always remains constant. And it al always remains a means by which we can rejoice. So we may not be, have much to rejoice about as we look at our lives and we look at our circumstances, but there is one thing we can rejoice in, and that is our salvation. The next thing he says is, I will sing to the Lord. Singing to the Lord, rejoicing before the Lord, singing to Him can really uh, change our perspective and cause us to not so much look at our situation in a negative light, thinking, woe is me, uh, the Lord's not helping me out, look at what I'm having to go through. We turn that around and we just sing praises to God. Remember His love, we rejoice in His salvation, we begin to sing to Him. Uh, talk about turning... Uh, a sour heart sweet again, that would definitely do it. And, and the, one of the re reasons why he could do that was he looked at his, at his uh, uh, life in the past and he says, because he has dealt bountifully with me. And we can look back at how bountifully God has dealt with us. Even if we didn't look at all the physical things, and there are plenty of physical blessings that we could look at to see how God has dealt bountifully with us, but just look at the spiritual blessings. As Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 says that He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We have definitely been dealt with bountifully. And just because we don't have this one answered prayer that we're looking for, we need to look at just how blessed we have been and all the things that God has done for us and look at everything from that perspective. And perhaps it would change things around. So the next time you feel despondent, you feel discouraged because you've been praying a prayer perhaps for years and you still haven't seen any fruit from it, you haven't seen an answer to it yet, go to Psalms 13, verses 5 and 6, and, and let the psalmist be an example for you to remember and remind yourself of God's love, to rejoice in the salvation that you have through Christ, to sing to the Lord, and to remember that He has dealt bountifully with you. To come to Him with a thankful heart for what He has done in your life. Well, I thank you guys for listening in today. I hope you guys have a great day. I love you guys. God bless.